We're joined now by the top Democrat in the House, Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi. Thanks for joining us again. Good morning. This morning, you just heard the president right there. He wants to sit down and talk. Will you? I think it's, uh, we were a little far down the road for that. But before we go into him and that this Sunday morning, we have to be very prayerful for what's happening in California on top of Puerto Rico, Texas, Harvey. Those Irma, wildfires. The wildfires in California, the hurricanes uh, throughout our country, the violence in Nevada. People are hurting. We have to be very prayerful about that. And at this time, uh, you're suggesting that we sit down with the president. The president says repeal and replace. Where's the replace? We haven't seen anything. I don't think, uh, I think that this week, the week of Friday the 13th, is the week that President Trump went rogue. He went rogue on women's health in particular, uh, the Affordable Care Act, the Iran dis decision that he made, and as he continues his war on the middle class with his unfair tax plan. So, so, so many things that are not based on evidence, and that's problematic. But it's not based is, on evidence. But the question what do you do about it? Well, what, what I've tried to suggest to him that uh, while we understand our differences, we can find our common ground if we have evidence-based decisions. You have governors uh, Hickenlooper and Kasich, a Republican, and a Democrat saying that this is wholesale chaos that he's inflicting on the si system. You see what the governor of Nevada, a Republican, Sandoval, has said about what it will do. Either the president doesn't know or he doesn't care. And so what we'd like him to do is face the facts. As I say, he either doesn't know or he doesn't but care. But those payments are going to stop next week now that the president's taken this action. <laughs> so what do you do? How do you get them back? Will you demand those payments to keep the government open in December, for example? Well, we are not about closing down government. The Republicans have the majority. They have the signature of the president. It's up to them to keep government open. We don't go down that path. But I will say this, that uh, the Republicans in Congress have to be responsible. Right now, we're fighting them to get children's health insurance, the CHIP program, uh, uh, reauthorized and funded to go forward. They're holding that up. All of this to give a tax cut to the wealthiest people in our country, a war on the middle class. It is very, very sad. So in terms of the health care, we're saying let's follow what uh, Senator Murray and Senator Alexander are doing. The Alexander Murray, whatever way you want to put them. Uh, in the Senate, they're trying to find common ground uh, and that should be encouraged, and that's one... But the White House is saying, Mick Mulvaney, the head of the Office of Management and Budget, is saying the president doesn't support that on its own. He's going to want some of his priorities in return. Well, what are his priorities? Building a wall, for example. Well, you, you can't Repealing Obamacare. Wall, please. Well, re he wants to negotiate um, um, the health care bill by repealing the Affordable Care Act and building a wall. No. What... I think that, in other words, some of the things he did the other day, like saying you can buy insurance across state line, that's already in the Affordable Care Act. You know, so I'm just saying, what are, what are his priorities? Except the priority for many of them is there should be no government role. They, they never really, the Republicans never really supported Medicare when it came into being. They now say it should wither on the vine. This is being about a public role associated with public, with the, the good health of the American people. And, 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 and what they're doing with their tax plan and with their health bill will hurt But in, in the absence of action by Congress, isn't the president getting what he wants in repealing by Obamacare step by step by step? Well, it, it, what he's doing is hurting the American people. This isn't about policy or politics. It's about the American people. And if he, if he is... If he wanted to do that, why would he hurt people and say, now that I've taken the American people hostage, let's talk? We have a path in the Senate, demo bipartisan path. At least, I, I wonder if he even knows what that path is. Because from what he says, it doesn't sound like he has knowledge, knows the facts, bases his decision on evidence. And, and that's a problem. You say you don't want to shut down the government, but the, the, no. the White House has made it pretty clear if the president doesn't get his priorities, like the wall uh, with the government funding bill in December, uh, that he is not, that they are not going to have the votes to keep the government open. Well, how, why are you putting that in us? They have the majority in the House and the Senate and the president's signature. They have the power to keep government open. And if they don't, if they can't get there on their own, what price will the Democrats demand for their votes? Well, it's, uh, 
It's a negotiation. It's not a price you demand. Certainly, we intend by the end of the year to have uh, the DREAM Act passed to protect uh, young people. The president says, and I take him in good faith, he told us he cares about the young people. I think he cares about them because the American people care about them. And he's going to hear from the American people on the health care bill as well. But uh, you, you're, we're, we're moving from one thing to the next because that's the chaos that is, uh, exists in the White House right now. And I, I just, I, maybe he's being ill-advised, I don't know. But I do know that when he speaks, he does not speak from the basis of knowledge. That's why it's so hard to deal with him. I said to have said to him, when we've had our differences with Republicans across the aisle or down Pennsylvania Avenue, we've always been able at least to go forward based on data, evidence, facts. A, a, a bottom line in terms of a number. So to say, unless I get a wall, I'm going to shut that government down, is totally irresponsible for a president of the United States. And it's part of his war on the middle class because he wants, again, a tax bill that is unfair to them if he doesn't get that, uh, repeal the Affordable Care Act if he doesn't get that. Let me ask you another question about your own leadership. Uh, one of your fellow members of Congress, Linda Sanchez, fellow Democrat, came out this week saying it's time for change at the top. Our leadership does a tremendous job, uh, but I do think we have this real breadth and depth of talent within our caucus, and I do think it's time to pass the torch to a new generation of leaders. How do you respond to that? Well, I, I think we do have a, a great a, array of talent, and I have promoted it all along the way. I think when you see some of the people who represent the House Democrats, like Adam Schiff and the rest, people I have promoted uh, in, in the party, getting them ready, it's up to the caucus to select its next leaderships. I enjoy the support of my caucus. And you're not going anywhere? Well, I, I, I'm here. Well, the Affordable Care Act, as you know, is very important to me. And I, uh, when the president became president, and I saw the threat to it, I said, I, I've got to stay to take care of the Affordable Care Act. And that's my fight. That's my mission. But also to have women, women at the table, at the leadership table. Uh, I'm here to fight for our, uh, our better deal, better jobs, better pay better future for the American people. I think that the biggest evidence for lack of experience in a job is the president of the United States. Leader. Uh, so I uh, fully intend uh, to make, on the basis of my knowledge, my legislative, I think I'm a great legislator. I know the budget. And uh, I, don't, I don't believe that I have, self-promotion is a terrible thing, but clearly somebody has to do it, so. Leader Pelosi, thanks for your time this morning. Thank you, my pleasure. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.